Tuesday is primary day for South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. He is dominating in polls against a half dozen opponents, but if he doesn't top 50 percent, he'd face a runoff. Let's bring in Fox News digital politics editor Chris Steyerwald, who is also resplendent in seersucker today. Welcome. One can, a man can only be so resplendent in your company, <laughs> Ms. Brame, Mrs. We're, Brame. We are glad to have you here. Well, it's my pleasure to be here, and it's good to wear seersucker for South Carolina. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been interesting because it looked like a couple of the candidates early on would maybe gain some yeah. traction, but it looks like the opposition to Graham has not coalesced behind any one of the six challengers. Well, that is true, Yet. but that's not necessary. The name of the game in mm -hmm. most southern states, or a lot of southern states, is they have runoff, so the goal is not to win outright, but to force the, the incumbent mm -hmm. into a runoff, as we're seeing in Mississippi now. Uh, Lindsey Graham has done a way better job. There is a lesson in all of this. Uh, for incumbents, for the Republican Party. Lindsey Graham made immediate and, and it would seem to be that they think him sincere, outreach to the right. Mm -hmm. He said, look, you and I don't agree on everything. I'm not going to go out there in a tri-corner hat, but on the places where you want me, you need me. And things like what's been going on with uh, Sergeant Bergdahl mm -hmm. and the Taliban Five and all of that has reminded South Carolina voters that there are some things on foreign policy on which they like Lindsey Graham. Right. I mean, he is military himself. Oh, yeah. Uh, a lawyer, a JAG lawyer. Oh, I mean, yeah. so he has a lot of understanding of these very important topics. But if he ends up in a runoff, you think there's any chance Oh, he sure. Loses? Well, here's what happens in a runoff, and we'll get ready to see this in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So you have a razor-thin race in Mississippi between Thad Cochran and Chris McDaniel. Chris McDaniel wins, but he's under 50%. Uh, but the electorate will change dramatically when we get to the end of this month and that runoff because it'll shrink and a lot of the it's moderate voters, yeah. it's, it's more passionate, it's more ideological and crossover Democrats who came in to support Cochran who touts his spending and touts his ability to appropriate uh, other people's money. Uh, he will, uh, he, he'll see a smaller, uh, more intensely conservative electorate. Uh, it will be next to impossible for him to win barring a huge interruption of this race. All right, so um, let's also talk about uh, this, the overall feeling, the overall mood. We had some Vibe. Fox News polling out this week and talking about the generic ballot, saying if you're a congressional uh, right. district you were red voting today, you've got to pick red or blue. Right. And now, I, from what I remember, we're going to put it up here, um, Republicans now at 43%, the Democrat at 39%. And that's, you know, every race is so nuanced and different. But, but if the election were held today and this held true, good news for Republicans. Huge and giant, because remember, Republicans generally underperform. Uh, no, put it a different way. Republicans, generally speaking, by about a half a point on average, but sometimes much more, Republicans generally outperform polls when it gets to election day. They vote with greater intensity and frequency. This year, the intensity is very high. And that's why states like Iowa are in the discussion. This was a state mm -hmm. that we wouldn't have even talked about before, that a, a year ago, there was no way that Tom Harkin, liberal icon, was going to be succeeded by any old Republican. And now, not only has Joni Ernst managed to avoid a runoff, coalesce the left or the center and the right of the Republican Party, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and the Tea Party Express don't always get together on every mm -hmm. candidate. She's united her Republican Party, and she's got Bruce Braley, the Democratic nominee, who was a front runner on the run. Well, and what about his ad this week? Yeah, well, I'll I'm a leave lady. it to ladies to talk about that. <laughs> that's not that's not my place to say. But don't I guess? But he's he's. It seems that he's doing some unforced errors in some of the campaign. This is a this is a couple of unforced errors. She's had good ads. He wanted to. She had an ad about uh, hog castration. Mm -hmm. uh, she We're did. With it that. was mm -hmm. it was a very effective ad. He wanted to respond to it, and he said that she was just making peeps. She was just making noise but wasn't really into castrating hogs. Uh, this is a very Iowa race. Uh, and <laughs> I love it. So he put chicks on to say that she was peeping like a chick. Mm -hmm. And then as it turned out, yes, all women get upset when you call them chicks and blammo. Mm, well, you chicks know. and dudes. We'll, yeah, we'll leave that for another day. All right. <laughs> thank you for the preview. I know you're yes, going to be watching closely on uh, Primary Tuesday to break it all down for Absolutely. us right here on Fox News. Absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Yes, ma'am.